even though they're leaving us pretty much the tools to make a weapon of mass destruction everywhere they go. Yeah. And I want to put an end to that. And I'm like, Oh no. Yeah, no, that's probably a good plan. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, like, yeah. I think she probably should kill knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> Today on the Screened In Podcast, that's right, the Screened In Podcast, where we talk about anything that's on our screens that includes video games, TV, anime, movies. If it's on a screen, we're probably talking about it. And that's it. Goodbye. No, my name is Mike Berger, (laughs) and uh, today on the podcast, I'm wearing a hat, and Idris Elba talks cartoonish to us. He may not be the next James Bond, but he'll settle for the third best character of a major video game franchise. Today, I'm joined by my seasonal Trader Joe's snack of a co-host, John Ardeglare. Welcome, John. Hello, hello. I have two questions and then a statement. (laughs) First question, what seasonal snack am I? If you can be specific. Synergistically seasoned popcorn. Didn't know that was a thing, but now I'm gonna have to try it so, so I can get to know myself. Uh, number two, who are the two ahead of Knuckles in the Sonic franchise? Sonic and Tails. Okay, so you do put Shadow above Knuckles. Oh, or you put Knuckles above Shadow. I mean, oh, that's a good point. All right, fourth best. <laughs> okay, what about that big beefy one that I don't know the name of, but that's in the cartoon? Oh yeah. I remember him as like uh, part of the video games too. I can't remember his name. I have not played much Sonic, and I but... think Amy's the female character. Let's put her in front of Knuckles too. <laughs> and then my statement is uh, love in the hat with the oh, green background and everything. It does look like if I'm not if... growing anything. Well, I was gonna say if the Power Rangers got a video call from a new villain. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> I'm just being pop up on the screen. It's this green room and this guy with this hat. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that is actually a really good question. Is how are they receiving phone calls from <laughs> villains? The villains were like, "I had your, no- I had your cell phone number." It's all magic. <laughs> it's. Oh my goodness! I like to but, think, uh, I like the idea that they all had each other's cell phone numbers just in case. Yeah, they were on WhatsApp together. They, they after had, like they after had, their first fight together, they're like, "Hey, uh, so what's your phone number so I can like call you if I want to do stuff?" Yeah. Hey, man, we should do this again sometime. Yeah, we yeah. Should, let's exchange some stuff here. Oh my goodness! Well, so so now that we know that Knuckles is the anywhere from third to ninth best character in the Sonic universe. This might be the best Sonic universe live action television show in, you know, in the Sonic universe, I think. Oh, it might be. You might be right about that. It's a tough field, but this one might edge out all the competition. Let's let's give Tails a shot. I'm just saying, let's give Tails a shot. all right, we're going to do this reverse. I'm oh. not going to ask if you knew this show was coming. I okay. will. Don't we'll just give me a few minutes. But overall, yes. What did you think of this show? To set the tone of how we're going to talk about this. Can I like cuz it was a journey. Can I talk about okay. the journey? You can talk about the journey. First episode, I was like, "Oh shit, this is good." Like I was like, mm-hmm. "Oh, this is awesome." The first like, like this, 15 minutes yeah. is like incredible. Oh, I was like, this is going to be so cool. Like, oh, what are we doing here? Like first episode. I'm like solid. Oh, that was great. Mm-hmm. Can't wait to watch the next one. My motivation to jumping back in this slowly petered off every single episode. Wow. By the okay. time I got to the last two, two, two episodes, I was I could not care less weirdly enough like sometimes we come on this podcast and there and we have like gripes about shows where 
we we didn't think the show did very well and we say hey you know it would have been great if they um they they went this way on that side story instead of yeah. doing so much of the main story and i have the opposite opinion <laughs> of this one i was like can we not have like all like all the bowling stuff and in the the weird guy with the long hair and his motorcycle and oh yeah just just all of that was like really weird and like existed it was just uh, some of it was funny and some of it made me chuckle but i was it just felt weird and disconnected and i understand they were trying to like idris elba is really dry Knuckles is really dry. He doesn't understand the world. There's a lot of good jokes there <laughs> just because he doesn't understand the con context of anything that's happening. And then you have like his his sidekick who essentially is like a goofy dude and all that. And it, I don't know. Let, he OK, he's going to be our first topic of conversation. All right, let's go. But I have to say, just to give my little point of view here. All right. I, I felt the same way in that first 15 minutes. I was like, wow. Right. I'm like, this is really cool. Like the production value is like really good. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, oh, Sonic and Tails are in this. Like, I didn't know if they would be. I'm like, oh, are they going to be in the whole show? Yeah. No, they're not. <laughs> they're in it for like three minutes. But um, I didn't teeter. Like, I didn't, you know, fall off the cliff that much. Like, I still enjoyed it. Mm hmm. Uh, I liked the charm of it kind of being uh, it's one of those really huge net shows like as a 12 year old like I could see this show being awesome and as an adult I'm still like okay like it's goofy it's wacky like there's a lot of like low hanging fruit jokes but it's because it's like you said it's going to be the goofy jokes to offset Knuckles who's such a dry warrior but my biggest gripe with the show is Wade Whipple. I, I don't like the trope of just the complete goofy, pretty yep. much man child. Like, yep. The, 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 to sum it up, the, the scene that made me roll my eyes the most, oh, maybe, but like he, when he had his whole big plan and like he, he bought a bunch of fireworks for the finale uh -huh. Uh -huh. and they accidentally go off in his patrol car and yeah. light the whole thing on fire. Now in the real world, you just lit your patrol car on fire as a police officer doing something crazy. Yeah. Your career's over. You're going to be like, Oh my God. Oh Jesus. Yeah. He literally turns around. And he's like, oh, geez, those were for the finale. And I'm like, what? I'm like, come yeah. on. I'm like, yeah, what? Yeah, 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 like, yeah. like, I know. Like, and like, I know it's like it's a kid's kind of fun show. But I'm like, I hate how goofy this guy is sometimes. Like, it's over the top. Yeah, me too. Me too. There were like times where I liked it. I, I actually don't. Sometimes I have a thought on how to fix it. And in this case, I don't. I just know I didn't yeah. like like it. That's all I know is that I, I didn't like Wade Whipple. And I see it potentially working, right? Like, because it's a good offset from the Knuckles character who, like, doesn't understand the world. And he has to listen to this goofy guy explain stuff. And, mm -hmm. like, he's got an 80s bedroom. The the episode, I think there is it. Is it Hanukkah? Is it no? Hanukkah it's um. Or, is are it they, Seder? It's a yeah. It's Seder. Yeah, and and that that's that one episode, of the best episodes. That was a really good episode. It was like yeah. sh kind of shining moment in the middle there, and maybe the third or fourth episode, and. I thought uh, I thought that was a really good one, especially when all the bad guys kind of attack this house uh, and the whole yeah. family's like working together. And also being someone who's like married into a Jewish household, that was actually like all the different things that I'm seeing. Like I would have never known this before, but now I do. And I think it's all pretty funny based on like what I yeah. know. Um, and so like that was kind of a cool episode. Oh, I know what also bothers me. You know what also bothers me? 
the dad of Wade Whipple. I want to, yeah, that, that was my other big gripe. Um, what are we doing here? I'm like, this is like, it was just so strange. I was like, I don't understand any of this because oh. he's got a UK flag, UK accent. Like, I, what is going on there? And looks nothing like Wade Whipple. And then, like, I don't know. It was just very strange. Also, just as it was a Shabbat, a Shabbat, it was a Shabbat. Dinner. yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I, th- I should, I should uh, you know, people that, might listen to this and be like, how dare you, Mike? Weird. That's uh, sorry just not, to go back. We're going to go back to Wade Whipple's dad. But out of the six episodes, that's the second lowest rated episode on IMDb. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. wow. The okay. only next the, the next episode is is a little bit worse. But um, huh. the whole dad thing. Th- that's another weird character flaw of like. First of all, I thought it was hysterical when they were like, oh, he left him in a TJ Maxx. I'm like, yeah, that like that the, was the way it was delivered and everything. I was like, that's a funny, just random joke, like to make it a TJ Maxx for some reason. Yeah. But if you are a grown man and your whole life, your father dumped you in a TJ Maxx and you know about him, you know, he's yeah. off being successful and he's just never talked to you. You would not handle this situation like Wade does. He comes into it like a puppy. He's like, yeah, he's like, oh, papa. He <laughs> seems upset at first, and then he sees him, and that totally changes. And I was like, what? That's yeah, it's strange. It, the the fact that it took his well, spoilers for Knuckles, but like the fact that it took his dad to like re kidnap his mom and sister for this big plan. For him to be like, oh, he is a bad guy. I was like, what? Like, yeah. this is so weird that like he would want to meet his father. Like, I don't understand why. Because by the end of the show, he's like, I'm going to beat you, dad. Why wasn't he like that just from the beginning? And then maybe his dad show like a little bit of like niceness and he almost gets tricked or something. But yeah, to go into it being like. Oh, dad, I've missed you. Oh, my goodness. I'm like, that's not how any adult would act in that scenario at all. But I I don't know. Then the other character that I thought was interesting is I forgot that he's in this, but just just having Kid Cudi in here is kind of interesting. I, I, I was the main villain. It was so funny, but he did. He did like, the, I think the second movie's like main song it was a Kid Cudi, Kid Cudi song. Is he um, in the other, in the movies? I but think I don't know he, if he's he in the movies. Be. I don't check. know. Maybe he's an agent of like the good guys or something. Because I forget how all of this works already. Already, the Sonic universe is getting away from me after two movies and a TV series. Oh, that's also I want to bring that up. There's a couple weird flaws in this movie, but one of them. Is the bad guys, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find if Kid Cudi was in the movie, but the bad guys, like Kid Cudi and his sidekick, she's one of those villains who, when you boil it down, she's not wrong. Mm -hmm. Like, she's like, I'm going against my organization because they're sweeping Sonic and them under the rug, even though they're leaving us pretty much the tools to make a weapon of mass destruction everywhere they go. And I want to put an end to that. And I'm like, Oh no. Yeah, no, that's probably a good plan. Like, yeah, yeah, no, like, I think she probably should kill knuckles. (laughs) (laughs) But it was just so weird. I'm like, like, kill them. Yeah. I, I forget what the other main villain is doing that you know biker dude mechanic but uh, like just like her he, he was giving me iron man 2 that's what yeah. he was giving. like he, it just like i was like uh, by the end i was like oh we're in iron man now yeah it was like him whatever like he was more the, like like exactly the classic villain from like a superhero movie yeah but yeah the, the agents i was like i don't know well, i like, actually love that actor and he was he was yeah, doing he a was good. great job 
like when I first saw him, I was like, oh, this dude's bad. Like I, I actually really liked his performance as an actor. I thought it was really mm-hmm. good. I was like, but I almost thought I was like, he's in a different movie because he's playing this so serious and like so, he's like such a bad guy. Like I could see a little kid being like, dang that. Oh, that guy's the only person, <laughs> the only person in this movie that I'm taking seriously right now. Yeah, that guy's legit. <laughs> I and and I'm glad like you met. Like I feel like the acting in this show is good. It it's just the character, like Wade Whipple's character, like uh what's his name adam pally he plays the character well it's just the character is written to be this weird goofball and the whole other thing about like that his best friend is absolutely the worst dude like he calls that the dog the bounty hunter basically is oh, who he yeah. that, that guy is he calls that bounty hunter his best friend and i'm like what are we doing here like you yeah. are you that sad that this is your friend like what do we and then that episode where um where they they duel and he takes the kid's bike i was like this is getting really goofy and yeah. i don't really know how to how to handle this right now um it's quite weird I, I there's parts of me where i i wonder if you feel the same way do you think that this was possibly a movie at first and then like er, er, very early on in the process they switched it to a show and maybe I don't know. that's why there's a lot of like weird like emphasis on that stuff to like you know kind of space out more episodes like weird filler in yeah between. i don't know that i mean it's a possibility the whole time i was watching this i'm like man like this could have been like a big you know sonic 3 essentially like the next iteration mm-hmm. in the theaters i'm like I, this yep. totally could have worked as a movie. You could have cut this whole thing down. Like when he meets Wade, they could have been like, okay, bowling, let's go. And you could have cut out a lot of the stuff. And then like the second half of the movie, been the whole bowling tournament and the dad saga. Yes. But it stinks. We, we said the Shabbat dinner is one of our favorite parts. That could, that whole thing could get cut. Yep. Like his mom oh, and Sid it, come yeah. in a little way. Like, I think yeah. this definitely could have worked as a movie. I'm I, happy I, it was a show. Right. I like that it was only six episodes, but this is literally the opposite problem that we said Rebel Moon had, right? Like Rebel, we were like Rebel Moon needs to be a series, and we're like Knuckles needs to not be a series. It needs to be a movie. Yeah, like I think this, I think this would have worked like really well as, as a movie. Like you could probably take the yeah. existing series and cut it to be a movie. You could have made it a straight to Paramount movie. You don't even have to release yeah. it in theaters if you don't want to. I bet it would have cut your budget a lot because you don't have to do nearly as much shooting as you do for the series. Yeah. And I wonder why. Like, I, I don't know if maybe if series maybe do better now on streaming compared to a movie or like, I, I'm not sure what the rationale would be for them to decide to make a Knuckles series, but. Hmm. Whatever, maybe they hope to expand on this. Maybe they had a bunch of different well, stories. I think one measurement or metric they like to look at is like a series. You're you're not going to be able to sit, to sit down and watch it all at one time, although we do. Um, but whatever's going to get someone to go, get on the app and stay on the app as long as possible is going to be better so i think sometimes they draw things out to be a series so they're like well at least they're going to come back like three or four times to like watch the rest of the series and that's basically what i did versus me jumping onto paramount plus to just watch a movie and then canceling my subscription um after that you know so maybe maybe that's it i think you hit on something there yeah, I, that that really does make sense too when you take into account it's Paramount Plus mm-hmm. because, I mean, out of all the streaming services, like that's in that like C tier of like there's yeah. good stuff on there, mm-hmm. but when you sit down to watch something at night, you don't really go for Paramount Plus it's unless also, you like, know something specific. It's you have to as a streaming service, you have to, I think. Like, you know, we've talked about this before, but going back to it is like Apple TV is like, we're going to put quality stuff on here. 
Like yeah. our things are going to be quality. Like we want to put quality things on here to get people to stay on the app. And then Netflix is like, we're going to just throw everything at yep. you. We're going to have everything so many possible. licenses. You, you have no idea. But we're going to release one documentary a day for the next five years. The fact that Tiger King was such a huge thing was totally accidental. Nobody expected it to be that big. Everybody was like, you know, everybody working on that project was like, this is going to be a weird niche story. Maybe a few people will watch it. Then the pandemic happened and they released it and they were like, oh, look, we stumbled upon this. Um, yeah. So I think and I think that Netflix does that all the time. And mm -hmm. in some of the stuff on there is legitimately trash. But the people who watch it are like, oh, I know it's trash, but yeah. it's my trash. I feel like that. Like I joked, but like the Netflix documentary is like now like a genre of itself, like oh, the yeah. amount of limited series they release of mm -hmm. documentaries on the most random things you've never heard of, but are oh, yeah. super interesting. Yeah, and yeah. A lot of the time catch on quite a yep. bit. They go viral for some reason. And they'll they find just... a way to draw that out to into like four or five episodes too. like, yeah, try to make it as long as possible. So maybe that's maybe that is what like something like that's the new formula. Like it may be. I don't know how it would be cheaper than making a movie. But now but if who knows it's going, uh, you know, we're talking about something that that's going in a completely different direction now because now we have um there was just announced i think it was uh disney hulu and discovery or espn something like that are all combining to make one specific streaming service so they are all on the same thing yeah, now right so but but i think it's like an official like app or something oh, I, okay. I don't know i don't know what it was it. There, there was some type of announcement there and and what we're seeing now and oh it's and it's all going to be put underneath Comcast which we're go is is really weird right yep. so um i think they're panicking because they're doing stuff that they never did before with the subscriptions they're cracking down on the password sharing uh the subscription prices have gone up something ridiculous like 200 percent. oh my god don't even get me started on that and so now we have all of these segmented things and all of these different corners and we would love to watch them but we can't because we used to have a cable subscription that you know what at this point i would have i would take a cable subscription that just let me watch tv the way we yeah. used to because now it's we have deeper. all of these different things in the corners of different places and you have to have a script subscription to all of them, especially yep. for what we do when we're talking about all these different medias, we yeah. have to go from one app to another. And it's, it's kind of a pain. I think you and I probably like cancel our memberships at certain points. And then there was definitely times in the beginning where we would be like, Oh, did you hear about this movie? We should watch that. And one of us, big, oh, crap, I don't have that. Uh, I guess I'll do like a month or something just so we yeah. can watch it. Yeah. But it, it, it's gotten insane. So what they're probably shooting for is to get these mainstay you know, shows or series that now people have to come to Paramount for. Because right. I, I saw a little blurb that said something. I can't find anything to back this up. So don't take this for a fact. But supposedly the, the budget for Knuckles was less or is less than the budget for the third Sonic movie. Oh, so. If they can pump these series out for cheaper somehow, maybe it has to do like, I don't know, maybe for a movie they get bigger talent like. Jim Carrey isn't showing up in this series, right? Like, you know, it's. They probably cut things certain ways. Maybe the you don't notice it as much, but maybe the the visual effects are like a step below because they don't have to make it for like the for big screens or I don't I don't know. But I, that being said, I looked up while you were talking if there is going to be a Sonic season two, and that's or sorry a Knuckles Oops. season two. Please say not confirmed, <laughs> which. I'm surprised, actually. Really? Yeah, because I was surprised that you had 
such a harsh criticism of this show. You said, I think you said you hated it. It was the worst thing you've ever watched. So it's surprising that my uh, exact it, words were let them eat cake. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like the, from what I've seen online, this is sitting around like a seven or 7.5 out of 10, which I think is accurate. That's pretty good. Uh, the first Sonic movie on IMDb is at a 6.5 and that's getting its third movie now. And so that for them to make a lips. knuckles show, not even a tail show and for it to be well liked pretty much. I thought they would be, be like, yep, season two coming. No problem. Like, yep, it's coming or a tail show get announced and they are going to like have a tail show. I don't know, Bubba the Weasel or whatever his name is, the big guy, Annie, whatever her name is, just go down the line. But if you, I don't, it, it's it's insane that the Sonic universe is having a resurgence like this. I I I really liked both movies. Um, yeah. So for me, the the Knuckles series is like a five out of ten or a oh, six wow. out of ten. A five uh, out of ten might be the lowest we've ever rated something on this show, Burger. Uh what did we really not like? Um at the time I think we didn't rate it low, but Mataroshi's well, low. Rebel Moon is probably worse than Knuckles. I think. Oh man, that's actually a tough one for me. The here's a little fun Rebel Moon tidbit. The Rebel the Moon longer... part two is worse than knuckles in my opinion rebel one was at least like semi-interesting and something new i don't know the longer i'm away from rebel moon the more i like it is what like like, the more i don't like the more i'm sitting here and i'm like sitting out like i'll find myself just like what when that third one's coming out (laughs) like like, i don't know like (laughs) I, i like the longer i don't watch it the more i'm like yeah mind those too much but i i definitely think that like this is not some standout great show this is not one that i'm going around recommending to people no um i did have it on well when kelsey was like uh hanging out in the living room and she didn't mind it like she was jumping in halfway through and thought it was okay like she was entertained for a little bit um it led to, I think we're going to rewatch the Sonic movies because she's never seen them. Nice. So I was like, oh, nice. all right, that's fun. Like, um, if you're going to do some kind of, you know, movie marathon into something. the first two movies and, you know, some type of Sonic marathon, mm-hmm. you're going to need some HP brew, my friend. Ooh. So this right here is coffee inspired by our favorite gaming series this one i'm holding right now in my hand by hp brew is a mushroom coffee infusion and you know where knuckles is from the freaking mushroom planet oh what a tie-in that's right it makes sense i don't know if that's true but i'll believe it because hp H- brew is good <laughs> look at that good label. for me good for you hp oh, brew very nice so yeah you guys can uh make a cup of coffee of that before yeah definitely um before your marathon love um, some hp brew i i might need some soon um for our next episode uh <laughs> so final thoughts on knuckles i don't know um how did you feel about it john like i've given my opinion but if you were to rate it what'd you rate it i i, I think the wh- where like the internet has landed on it right now uh Rotten Tomatoes is sitting at a 72. I think that that's pretty good. Uh, it, it had a Saturday morning cartoon kind of vibe to it mm. where as long as you're not taking it too seriously and realize like it's made for anyone between the ages of eight and 80, it it's fine. I would be interested in a second season. I'm not sitting here like crossing my fingers and hoping and praying that there's a second season, but I do like the kind of live action mixed with CGI character. I think it's done really well. 
So I, I'm I'm open for more Sonic content, more Knuckles content. Overall, I liked it. But like I said, yeah. I'm not sitting here going telling everyone I know to go watch Knuckles. Let's go back to our old rating system. I'd give it a Chris Gatling flambe Jimmy Neutron. Oh my, oh my God. Those are right off the bat. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. So we need a a, a food. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> any this any one... athlete and any any animated character. I got here a food. Uh one of like the premium quick check subs. Oh. They're good, but I'm not telling anyone to go buy one. I'm not like, hey, I had this great <laughs> sub the other day. You gotta go, you gotta you get gotta over go, it. You gotta <laughs> go to quick check. Well, I just like it and you know it's pretty good. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, retired athlete. Oh my god, I have no idea what I would come up with for that. Who's I, like a mediocre athlete? That's why I went Chris Catley. I don't even know who that is, Burger. <laughs> it's just some guy that was good at semi good at rebounding and balled with a uh, a he had a chrome dome with a, a headband around his head, and I thought that looked kind of funny when I was a kid. Oh my god. Oh, I found a website called Mediocre Athlete. No, I'm going to check that out later. Uh, and then for a, for a cartoon, what's like a middle of the Jimmy Neutron's a good one. Yeah, I hit a I hit a I saw that movie in theaters for Jimmy Neutron. I saw the Rugrats movie in theaters. I think I might have saw that one too. That's a that's a classic. Classic. I was trying to think of like a the Reptar Mobile. With the monkeys? Oh, man. I always wish I had that. Man, I don't know what, what a cartoon would be. I was trying to think of, like, what's a cartoon that I liked, but I didn't really get too into, but that's good. You sprung this on me, Burger. I got nothing. I'm trying to think. Man, oh, man. That's okay. You don't need to know. Oh, I do. It's good enough. You can tell us next episode what you came up with. There we go. <laughs> So that has been our episode of the Sonic series. We are kind of excited about the idea of a season two. We wouldn't hate it. Yeah. Eh? John's John's like, okay. I'm yeah, like, I would take it. Eh. I would watch it. Yeah. So, so uh, Paramount, that's, that's how we feel about it. <laughs> we'll create something. Um, and just get get rid of Wade Wilson, and we'll have a good time. Um, uh, it's Wade Whipple. Thank sorry. you very much. Sorry, I, I was thinking of Owen Wilson in that moment. Um, How dare you? So, uh, thank you for listening to another episode of the Screened In Podcast. Um, we are on all of the socials. Uh, we have a Discord in case you want updates about what we're doing next. Which I actually find that to be one of the most fun parts of what we've done so far is just like interacting on the discord and with all of our friends who actually uh, listen to and watch this show. Um, so we thank you guys for listening week after week for, uh, for basically coming up on two years now. Holy cow. Oh my God. Is in it the really? fall in the fall? It'll be, oh, okay. it'll be two years. Um, so not, not that soon, but, but soon. So thank you guys for listening. Um, coming up, we still have Dave the Diver on the agenda. So if you're looking to play a video game, kind of a play along podcast episode, uh, check out Dave the Diver. Um, yeah. It should give you a week or two between this and us recording and playing and posting that episode. So um, it, it's fairly cheap. I think 20 or $30 at the moment. You uh, can pretty much it was, buy it on. Yeah, I think it was 20 bucks on Switch. 20 bucks on Switch. It's fairly cheap. Good indie already know that it's a very good reviewed game. So it's mm -hmm. not like we're coming out here with anything random, but we really wanted to play it. So that's coming up soon on the podcast. Unfrosted, the Netflix show, it's a baby. So uh, stay tuned. We hope to see you guys again soon. And thanks for listening. Adios, everyone. See you later, everybody. <laughs>